You have to credit the new Mahindra Thar for making off-roaders mainstream. Since its launch last year, over 75,000 people have put their money down on one and that's a big, big number. This newfound interest in off-roaders also plays into the hands of Force Motors that have just come out with the new Gurkha. Over the course of today, we'll test these two on-road and off-road and talk of aspects like comfort and practicality and finally tell you which one makes the most sense for you. You've seen the Thar and Gurkha before, so I'll keep the introductions short. Both models are hardy off-roaders that use tough ladder frame construction and get four-wheel drive. The new Gurkha that's just gone on sale is, for the moment at least, only available in hardtop format with a diesel engine and manual gearbox. For a like-to-like -like comparison, we've got the Thar in similar hardtop diesel manual guys. However, the Thar is available in more variants with petrol and diesel engines, both offered with auto and manual gearboxes, and there's the option of a convertible top too. There's a lot of numbers coming at you over this video, and I'll start with basic dimensions and how they manifest in the way these two look. The Gurkha is the longer model here, but it's the significantly higher roof that really makes it seem like the larger vehicle. The optional roof rack only adds to the effect, though at the same time the relatively small 16-inch rims also make the Gurkha look a bit top-heavy. In look, the new Gurkha is all block-like and angular and like a G-Class for the masses. The front bash plate and standard fit snorkel establish it as something serious, while the full LED headlights and long single-piece rear windows are other details of note. The shut lines are consistent and the Gurkha also feels tough in its build. The Thar might be shorter in length and have the lower roof line, but it's wider in its body as well as front and rear tracks, has the longer wheelbase and in LX trim as featured here also rides on larger 18-inch rims. All of which come together to give the Mahindra a more show-footed stance. The Thar is undeniably Wrangler-like in its look. It looks chunky and tough and like the Gurkha gives out a don't mess with me vibe. Zoom in and see and again you'll find exterior fit and finish is good. Which off-roader do you prefer? Let us know in the comment section below and if you haven't already, please like the video, subscribe to the Autoka India channel and hit that bell icon. There's quite a difference in how these two are on the inside and it starts with the manner you get in. It's a climb up into the Gurkha and its high set cabin also requires use of the handle on the A pillar to pull yourself up. That reassuring sound on door shut tells you that you're sitting in something very tough and on the driver's seat you'll also feel like the king of the road. You're sat very high up, in fact you're looking down at drivers in their Fortuners. The seating position is also very accommodating thanks to a wide footwell and the seats themselves are also nice and large. Though a bit limited in range, there's tilt and telescopic adjust for the steering too. There's no seat height adjust though and what's disappointing is that there's no power adjust for the mirrors. Even the tyre pressure monitor seems like an afterthought. The dials also look basic and that's something you can say about the dashboard as well. The Gurkha's dashboard is quite straightforward in look and doesn't look fancy. Fit and finish is also mediocre at best, you will find uh, uneven panel gaps and the plastics are all hard and when you really live with the Gurkha you'll also find that things like the aircon controls feel quite rudimentary in operation. The Kenwood touchscreen is fine on usability and gets the job done offering Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. The cabin gets four USB slots, the wide center console offers space for small items and there's a usable glove box too. Shifting into the Thar. First things first, it's not as much of a climb into its cabin. The Mahindra Thar is the easier off-roader to get into, but after you've spent time in a Gurkha, you'll find the Thar's cabin a lot more compact. You'll find yourself sitting closer to your co-passenger, and this blacked-out roof also reduces the sense of space inside the cabin to an extent. After having spent time in a Gurkha, there are other things that come through as well. 
The Thal's front seats aren't quite as generous as the ones that you get in the Gurkha, but to the Thal's credit, you do get a driver's seat height adjust. A problem for me is that the Thal's footwell isn't all that wide and doesn't leave any space to rest your left foot. But in overall look and feel, the Thar's cabin is far nicer. The Thar's interior is significantly better on quality with nicer plastics used all around. It's also more interesting in look and it's got unique elements like carbon fiber weaving at the air convents and this plaque that tells you that it's been made in India with pride. On paper, the Thar offers a bit more than the Gurkha, but the execution is a lot better on the Mahindra. For instance, the Thar is also the only one with steering mounted controls and in general the quality of switches is superior too. Also nicer is the Thar's touchscreen that also packs in off-road data. The Thar also has the smarter dials and more informative MID with nice graphics for the four-wheel drive functions and it handily also features a display for steering angle. In terms of practicality, the Thar gets you door pockets and cup holders between the seats, but the glove box is tiny. Shifting focus to the back seats. Getting into and out of the Thar's second row is tricky business. You have to enter from the front passenger side and even with the seats lit all the way forward, the opening isn't large enough for full-size adults to get through with ease. Comfort isn't the best either. Now, you will have to choose carefully who gets to sit at the back because once you're inside, you'll note that quite a bit of space is taken by the wheel wells at the side and you're actually sitting shoulder to shoulder with your co-passenger. You do have the option to adjust the backrest recline to your liking, but the seating position is quite knees up and there's not all that much space for your feet. Your right foot will foul with the rails for the front seat adjustment. On the plus side, the Thar does get proper three-point seat belts at the back. In a Gurkha, you enter from the tailgate. It's a big step up, but the passage between the seats makes entry to the rear seats far easier. Now, as you can tell, the Force Gurkha offers way easier access to the back row seats. Now, once you're inside, you'll also notice that since you're not sitting beside the wheel arches, but on top of them, you have a lot more space at your disposal. There's a generous amount of headroom, even for someone of my height, I'm just under six feet tall. There's a good amount of knee room. I have space to tuck my feet under the front seats. And there's also plenty of space to my fellow passenger. I also like that the windows are really large. They give you this whole uh, safari car kind of vibe. Now, taller passengers will find themselves uh, looking at the top of the window, but you can recline the backrest to your liking. You also get uh, adjustable armrests, which is something you don't get on the Thar. The Gurkha also offers more room for luggage, but you'll have to position your baggage cleverly to leave enough room for your rear passengers to get out. Notably, the Gurkha's front passenger seat doesn't slide all the way forwards as on the Thar. On the Thar, the side hinged tailgate and top hinged windscreen open to reveal a smaller luggage area. The Thar's rear seat backrests do split and fold to free up more room. Now on to what you'd find at the other end of these vehicles. A quick spec check will tell you that the Gurkha with a 2.6 litre diesel unit has the larger engine, but its 91 horsepower and 250 Nm aren't a match for the Mahindra's 2.2 litre MHawks 130 HP and 300 Nm figures. Factor in their weights and the gap grows further. The Mahindra also goes one up, literally so, with its six-speed transmission. But what are they like on the road? First up, in the Gurkha. The Gurkha has the larger engine, but it's down on par and torque, and it's also a fair bit heavier, and you can feel as much on the go. At low city speeds, performance is adequate, but on the open road, you'll find the build of speed very slow and almost uh, lethargic. It takes its time to get up to speed and uh, quick overtakings are not what the Gurkha likes to do. The 2.6 engine is shared with Force's commercial vehicles and that partly explains why it delivers power the way it does there's a very small power band to play with. 
it's done with its best by 3000 rpm and uh, honestly it does little to excite you Gearing is also very short with fourth gear maxing out at a true 103 kph and a top speed of 123 kph in fifth. It feels comfortable at about 80 km an hour but 100 km feels like a bit of a stretch and beyond that you have to really work this engine hard. If you're looking to do a quick cross country run the Gurkha won't suit your needs. The gearbox also has long throws and isn't precise and you'll often be second guessing gear shifts. The Mahindra Thar, it's a very different proposition on the move. After a go in the Force Gurkha, the Mahindra Thar almost feels like a sports car in comparison and that's all down to the engine. It just has so much more to give. It feels so much more responsive and when you really press on, it'll even rev to 4000 rpm with absolute ease. The difference in performance is huge and that's talking in gear acceleration times. Look at 0 to 100 kph times if only for academic interest and you'll realize the Thar is in a whole different planet on this front. You don't need to work the gearbox to get the most out of the Thar's engine, though you wouldn't mind rowing through the gears here. The Thar's gearbox is also really nice to use. Shifts are positive and uh, the gear changes also happen with a very satisfying click. And because the Thar uses a 6-speed gearbox, it's also a relatively happier cruiser. So 100 kph in 6th gear on the Thar equates to about 2000 rpm. In the Gurkha, 100 kph in 5th gear equates to a busier 2500 rpm. And there's always more on offer. The Mahindra Thar cruises quite effortlessly and should you want to make a quick overtake, there's always this reserve of power that you can just tap into and make your way past traffic. Adding confidence on the highway are the Thar's strong brakes. What's also nice is that at high speeds, the steering feels precise enough, giving you a good sense of connect. At lower speeds, the Thar's steering also requires less effort to twirl, which makes it a more convenient drive in everyday conditions. It's also got the quieter engine, but all's not perfect. The Thar's engine is also quite refined and runs particularly quiet at city speeds. When you're going faster, you will hear a bit more of it, but what really fills the cabin at higher speeds is plenty of road and tyre noise. And? What isn't great in a Thar is ride quality. The ride always feels busy, there is this up and down movement at all times and uh, it's almost like the suspension amplifies surface imperfections. These movements are more pronounced at the back and uh, on a really bad stretch of road, you will be chucked around in the Thar. Shifting back into the Gurkha reveals some more points. For instance, while the Gurkha has the noisier engine in general, at a steady cruise, the force isolates road and tyre noise better than the Thar. The Gurkha has the comfier ride too. There are less body movements than you get in a Thar at cruising speeds. It softens the blow of bad bits of road quite effectively. And on bad patches of road, your rear seat passengers will particularly be much more comfortable in a Gurkha. That being said, there is quite a lot of kickback at the steering wheel on bad patches. The Gurkha steering also requires more effort to turn at low speeds and has more play at the straight ahead position. The tall Gurkha is fine on gentle turns but expectedly doesn't like quick direction changes. There's also plenty of dive under hard braking and the mushy feel at the brake pedal isn't reassuring in a panic scenario. On the subject, while both models comply with India's latest crash test norms, the Thar has been crash tested by Global NCAP and boasts of a 4-star rating. The Mahindra is also the only one to feature ESC. Now to see how they compare off-road. 
Both models use independent front suspensions and non-independent ones at the back with coil springs all around. In terms of off-road specs, it's the Thar that has the greater ground clearance as well as better approach, departure and breakover angles. The Gurkha has the edge in water wading ability and that snorkel is standard fit. Both our test cars are shod with all-terrain tyres. Both models also offer variations of the locking differential, whose job is essentially to cut wheel spin in a low grip setting. The Gurkha is old school in its use of manual rear and front locking differentials that can be actuated with strong pulls at dedicated levers. The Thar in high spec LX form uses a rear mechanical locking differential that automatically locks the rear wheels when there's a difference in wheel speed of 100 rpm. There's also brake locking differential at the front that brakes a spinning wheel so that all torque goes to the wheel with traction. We'd need a whole range of conditions to declare the ultimate off-roader of the two, but on a dry and hot day at some of the obstacles at the Learn Off-Road Academy near Pali outside Mumbai, we did get more than an inkling of what these models are capable of. It suffices to say that both models got themselves out of trouble. However, there were differences that I could tell from the pilot seat and some that were more evident to the spectators. On the short rutted path, the Thar slammed its way forward, but as our camera crew noted, front wheel articulation was good but not great. The Thar did feel surprisingly comfortable in the side incline. I have been here in larger vehicles and I can say that uh, the Thar, because it sits relatively low and it's quite wide, you feel uh, like you're on firm footing here. And hopefully uh, the mechanical locking differential hooks. There we go. <laughs> the Thar just slams its way through. The auto locking rear differential did come into play there, but it's not the smoothest in operation. It's uh, quite violent in its engagement. It does work quite well, it gives you the grip when you need, uh, but yeah, you can feel it slam into action when you're in the rough, and that can take you by surprise. That's not ideal in settings like a rock crawl. Set to four low, the Thar inched its way down a forested section of the trail, cleared a big dip at the base and worked its way out with ease. A longer and steeper hillside descent didn't phase the Thar either, but the rear bumper did make contact on a nasty drop at the base. The route back to base was via a steeper climb. Now this wall is not something you'd really even think of attempting in your regular SUV, but in a car you really can. The Thar just dismissed that pretty steep incline as if it were just a mere hillock. The Gurkha goes about its business slightly differently. Over the rutted path, again, front wheel articulation isn't exceptional, but there's more side-to-side -side movement in the taller force. It feels a lot larger, a lot heavier than the Thar, but um, it got the job done. Uh, no stress for the Gurkha there. It's not long before the manually locking differentials are summoned. Now this gives you a bit more adjustability in the rough to set up the good car for conditions in advance and uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. The side incline feels scarier than what it did in the Thar and that's partly because of how much higher I am off the ground. It's uh, an uneasy feeling if I can be very honest. Time to power out. And the 
their wheels are hooked and I'm safely out here. Over the forested section, the Gurkha's height is a boon. In a Gurkha, what you'll realize is that you get a better view of the world around you. You're sat higher and that translates into great visibility. And with the positioning lights at the edges of the bonnet, you also get a clear view of where the extremities of your Gurkha lie. The downhill descent is smooth sailing for the Gurkha in 4 low and 1st gear but like the Thar, the drop at the base has the Gurkha make contact. The rear footstep that extends out takes the hit. The Gurkha does make the climb back to base seem easier than it looked. <laughs> On the steep incline, the Gurkha is just charging its way up uh, the added safety net of the locked rear differential is making all the difference and we are back to safety drive both back to back in the same setting and you'd make note of more finesse in the Thar's mechanicals the Gurkha feels raw in a sense and perhaps even demands a bit more off-road know-how to get the most out of its hardware So which one should it be? Well, if you're looking at either of these as a family car, the Gurkha has its appeal with its roomier cabin and easier access to the rear seats. It's got the comfier ride too and true to tradition, it's properly handy in the rough. Sadly, the dull engine limits driver appeal and cabin quality isn't in keeping with the 13.59 lakh rupee X showroom price. Similar money, 13.68 lakh rupees to be precise, buys you the Thar LX. The tighter rear seats and small luggage area limit its appeal, but for buyers primarily looking for a lifestyle vehicle that also works as everyday transport, the Thar is excellent. It's got the attitude and the power to go with it and will take you far into the wilds when required to. What will be a clincher for many is that the Thar is also friendly enough to be an easy upgrade from a regular car. In a way, the Gurkha isn't. And that's even before talking of the petrol and automatic options the Thar can be had with. Long story short, it's the superior Thar that's the one we drive into the sunset in.